This is Jeff Mochi with RCR Wireless News, and today we're here with Tuli Ahava, who is Head of Big Data and Analytics for Nokia. Tuli, thanks for joining us today. My pleasure. Well, let's, uh, today's topic is going to be IoT and the recent Nokia Innovation Challenge, but let's uh, talk a little bit more about uh, IoT, starting with, you know, why is IoT important to Nokia's overall strategy? Um. We have a long history. You know, we are 150 years old company. We have renewed ourselves, but some things have, have always stayed in focus. It's about people. It's about connecting uh, people, now connecting things. It's about making a better world, basically. And, and in that context, we feel that this whole notion of IoT uh, is, is key for us. But much more uh, going beyond is, is a very big visionary topic for us. We call it the programmable world. So where do you see IoT fitting into your big data strategy, your analytics strategy, and ultimately your overall 5G strategy? Everywhere. Because <laughs> from uh, going from, from uh, whether it's the, first of all, I see big data analytics as an enabler. But if you think about IoT, Internet of Things, um, and, and, and thinking the, the world going forward was, for example, 5G, we, we see it all as a, as a big, um, uh, big, um, um, journey towards a world that is programmable and 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 do do to make that ever happen we need on one hand we, we need the, the 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 world of connection we need the uh, people and things to connect and we need to make some sense out of the huge huge amount of data that the, the people and the things are generating so they basically go hand in hand so but i, I use the big umbrella term uh, programmable world makes sense well um how do you see the network evolving to accommodate IoT and, and what a lot of people are saying is an information-centric uh, network and uh, driven by the, the pure number of devices that are going to be added to the network coupled with the 10 to 20-fold increase in mobile data and mobile video? How do you see the, the network changing? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. Now, on one hand, I see evolution. I see the evolution that started from 2G, went to 3G, wideband CDMA, uh, uh, we continue to 4G or LTE, and now we are going towards uh, 5G. So that's one of the, uh, one of the clear paths, so an evolution. But then we add the fact that, that um, the big data analytics uh, things uh, going into the cloud, all that complexity and, and a new type of intelligence coming together. So, so it's both. It's the evolution in adi uh, and the added intelli intelligence. Let, let's put it, for example, that way. Okay. Well, let's, let's talk a little bit about the Nokia Open Innovation Challenge. Why did you decide this year to focus on Internet of Things? Aha. You heard those two words, programmable world. That's not the world where we still live in. We are going towards that, and that's not Nokia, it's also the society. And, and we felt that we wanted to pick a topic where there is still a lot of space for innovation and, 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 and clearly a topic where we need to be part of or in a center of ecosystem. We need to look out. We can't develop everything in-house. In, in and that was a clear, uh, clear path. You remember last year, uh, uh, a colleague of yours was in, interviewing my colleague, David Letterman, and and, and uh, at that time, our theme was analytics and cloud. We saw that, that the next step and, and, and a clear area where we seek for the correct ecosystem, where there is a space for innovation, is this domain of uh, Internet of Things, and especially going towards the pro programmable world. Mm -hmm. So how are the 10 winners selected? Huh. Yeah, oh, hard work, but great work. So, so we, we uh, opened the challenge early, uh, challenge or early uh, August, and uh, um, and uh, opened it up for for uh, uh, via VR campaigns, uh, via doing a lot of work online using LinkedIn, um, and got got hundreds of uh, uh, application submissions. We were not collecting pure ideas. We were collecting something that is on a prototype maturity and uh, caught in hundreds of, of, of uh, 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 applicants and, and, and submissions and uh, had the cross-functional uh, cross jury. So I had super good jury uh, colleagues from Nokia, also from our partner, Nokia Growth Partners, and, and every unit from Nokia and all over the globe. And I'm really thankful for them because those guys, ladies, they were really doing hard work in drilling the hundreds to top 10, 
the same semi-finalists. Then we also have then, uh, a partner, an, a Finnish uh, uh, accelerator company called Copycatch, and we use them in, in coaching, in pitching. So we offer that type of extra round for all the uh, top, tw uh, top 20. And after that, uh, changed a little bit the questions that we have a, a global uh, a tool for managing innovation and, and use that tool uh, from, uh, from uh, uh, start until the end. And uh, for the top 10, uh, drilling uh, 20 down, uh, down to 10, we had partly the same jury, partly the same questions, partly different questions. Uh, and we put a little bit more uh, emphasis on thinking about that what next. It's still easy to collect good stuff. Mm -hmm. But the hard, hard work is to turn that to uh, business opportunities. Uh, how, does, how do these companies that were selected and the companies that you talk to, how do they fit in, in what I would call the, the horizontal ecosystem as compared to perhaps the vertical markets of healthcare and transportation? And, and then I'm not sure where you fit. I guess analytics would fit in that horizontal ecosystem. But talk about the ecosystem as, as Nokia sees it and how you started to see these verticals develop. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a good one because um, I see analytics, I'm a big data analytics lady, so I see analytics as a, as a horizontal. To be honest, we started from the vertical angle because the uh, opportunities are huge, the, the area is huge. So we needed to first step back, think what is really our strategy. And, and I wanted to scope this uh, uh, around, around our own strategy. That's why we picked certain verticals. If you don't mind, I, I, I mentioned the verticals and then let's talk about the horizontals. So, so it was clear that we, we picked uh, uh, um, um, uh, automotive industry. We did pick health, we picked uh, industrial internet, public safety. Um, and then uh, let me think about, did I forget anything out of the verticals? Uh, of course, connectivity. That's, that's obviously our, our easiest home turf. And, and then we thought about the, the vertical angle and, and uh, sorry, horizontal angle. And analytics was one word, security was another word. But obviously the whole game, it's, 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 it's not a simple architecture. There are players on like a huge amount of verticals and then the, the horizontal layers. But we have, we have found some sweet spots uh, for us and that sort of defined us also and, and helped us as drive the, the, the evaluation part. Uh, um, along the along the journey from August to uh, 10th of November when we celebrated and now going forward uh, to the real real stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about uh, on one end uh, about the cloud. And recently, Nokia had an announcement with their Telco's uh, cloud strategy that included OpenFlow and 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 so I'm kind of curious where you see the cloud fitting in. And then well, then separately, I want to talk about the the network connectivity and Nokia's view of, of licensed versus unlicensed. But let's, let's start with the cloud. Where do you see the cloud uh, fitting into uh, Nokia's IoT strategy? Uh, well, let's put it simple. I mean, everything will be cloudified. And, and I think that the IoT makes it so exciting because it's combining the, the, our traditional turf adding the big data analytics and enabling and doing that all uh, more and more in the cloud. So I, I see it as the, the base. I mean, it's internet of things. So can there be anything called internet without uh, a strong cloud structure? So, so um, that's, that's a wide but, but sort of simple answer. Uh, and then you picked up the the, the, the topic of uh, uh, going from uh, uh, cloud and, and going towards the, the, how did you put it? Uh, the, connect, the connectivity side, you know, is it yeah, going to be that, that, completely licensed? Is it going to be completely unlicensed? Uh, you've got companies like Sigfox that are creating new levels of connectivity. I was kind of curious where, uh, you know, IoT is going to require all the above. So I'm kind of curious where Nokia views connectivity. Yeah, if, if, uh, if uh, again, um, I need to be honest, I'm not the best IoT expert in this company, but the good news is that I know who they are. So, mm -hmm. so my, my network is good. So I'm, I'm rather, uh, my, my strength is on the, on the analytics side, but I can anyway, uh, maybe answer in a way that we do see these opportunities very wide. So, so we play on, on, on many fields. There is the traditional world with, with our current uh, uh, dear customers, uh, but we are also looking out, outside. That's okay. also part of the role uh, with the, the, the word innovation. I mean, the world is evolving and we need to keep on track. And, and, and that's why uh, it's, it's, it's both worlds and, and the combinations. And, and what we see 
uh, with our our um, uh, background and 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 uh, uh, the renewal path, uh, we try to use the strengths that we have from the the connectivity world and and. Uh, evolve together with the, towards the world that is, is truly programmable. So we need to understand the whole world, world, and that's why there is a lot to learn and there is a lot of space for innovation also. Well, what's next for the, the winners, the 2015 Open Innovation Challenge winners? What happens next to these companies? Yeah, uh, literally next, first of all, today I sent them all uh, um, a very nice, uh, uh, like a mood video we took uh, from our event, but those are the nice, easy things. In reality, uh, I have, uh, I'm, I'm uh, this week myself involved in 10 internal prepar preparation calls or meetings where we think first internally uh, uh, that what what could be the outcome with each of the ten, uh, the finalists of winners so so we continue with all of them um, i have dream outcomes i also know that this is the hard work this is the, the part that hey we have found something innovative but we need to also as a big company be sure that we have a landing zone so i hope that few of the winners will end up being uh, our real partners by our uh, uh, partner related business i think that uh, some of uh, uh, there will be a, a big bunch of proof of concepts. So, so the techn technology part and the innovation part of, of, of Nokia uh, will be happy. Then I, I uh, remains to be seen. I hope that there are some investment opportunities from Nokia growth partners. Obviously, all those are now uh, very early stage. And then uh, can we acquire one of the winners? It depends on the opportunity. So different paths for, for 10 uh, different uh, winners who are also in a little bit different stages and who also uh, represent different uh, IoT verticals. So, so uh, um, but I have, a, I have a good feeling and, and we want to be the programmable world uh, uh, enabler and, and company that, that, that uh, uh, enables the human uh, possibilities of, of technology. And, and I, I really hope that we can do that with, with uh, some, if not all of them, all of the 2015 winners. Well, that's great. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I do uh, like to close a little bit. Uh, you are head of uh, big data and analytics for Nokia. Talk a little bit about uh, what to look for in 2016 from your group. From our group, ah, uh, well, we have of course done the planning already uh, for for next year, and 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 I was uh, today, uh, for example, let's pick one topic, edge analytics, analytics, um, uh, distributed analytics, a, a, a good team, and we were like, there are so many exciting things that we we could work work on, and like, how can we accommodate? all the projects that, that are there in the pipeline. Uh, but, but some of them that is already further, some analytics related work. Uh, and maybe we touch all the, the, also the area of IoT analytics. Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, it's, it's uh, from innovation point of view, I mean real-time analytics last season, but to really bring that to our, our solutions, there is still work to be done. But from innovation angle, we are already going far. And, 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 and also working uh, with, with, with interesting uh, third parties where needed, plus realizing the, the deep long-term research that we have, have, have within our company. But, um, uh, well, it's, it's a too wide question. I mean, there are so many answers. <laughs> I, I said a few topics that, that excite, excite uh, me. Also, uh, one topic that stays, and it's still good old stuff, good old uh, use cases, but I think that in the monetizing the telco data, uh, monetizing the data, sort of that angle, collecting is still easy. It's the same in IoT. That's the difference between, to me, between IoT and programmable world. It's not anymore about collecting data. It's about bringing something good out of the data back to the society, for example, and back to us who, who live our lives in this current, current world. Uh, and I think the ultimate goal here is if you're collecting all that data, starting to drive it into decision engines. And if you do have the programmable network, that the network can start making decisions on its own. And uh, I think we've got a little ways to go there, but ultimately that is the goal with policy and policy enforcement. You can start taking action uh, with the network. You name and, it. and we'll see how that you plays out over the next couple of years. But uh, Tuli, thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely.